Hello, and this is my video of bands that should and shouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, this video is my first topic video, and it came from a few weeks ago. Guns N' Roses was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and in my opinion, they shouldn't have been inducted. To me, they were nowhere near a first ballot Hall of Fame band, especially some bands that have been looked over for years. And I just comprised a list of bands I think that should and shouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and or bands I'm sort of on the fence about who should be inducted. And these bands are actually eligible because it has to be 25 years after your first album. Now for me, some of these bands, when I read that they weren't in there or people weren't in there, it sort of just shocked me that they just weren't in there and all that first band I'd like to talk about is probably, to me, the best band not to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that would be Deep Purple. The fact Deep Purple, or even if you went in another direction and even just inducted Richie Blackmore, the fact that it's just not in there is shocking. Like, a couple albums that they release have to at least be enough to get in there like Deep Purple and Rock which is probably a uh, album I'll actually review in coming weeks but yeah that album is some could say is the groundwork for thrash metal it really was a great album and then you have Machine Head which is an album that what can you not say about Machine Head it was an amazing record it was everything that they were at the time and really Deep Purple is just one of those rock bands that is just shocking that they're not in there to me. Another band is probably one of my favorite progressive rock groups, ooh the evil prog rock, but King Crimson. King Crimson is one of the best progressive rock bands ever. Their album Earthbound, which featured the famous song 21st Century Schizoid Man, which to me was just an amazing track. And then other albums such as Red, which Kurt Cobain has said that it was very grungy and heavy and he really liked it. And even the album In the Court of King Crimson, which to me featured a lot of great songs off of. Next artist I'll talk about is probably the most obscure on the list and some people might not have heard of him but the legendary Captain Beefheart now for me this is actually going to be a theme going through a lot of these bands that I mentioned is that all these bands have what I deem substance to their music and isn't just it's not necessarily album sales determines who gets in for me. Uh, Captain Beefheart's first three albums, Safe as Milk, Trout Mask Replica, Lick My Decals Off Baby, they are quite possibly three of the best albums I've ever heard. I, I know for some it's very hard to get into Captain Beefheart and that, but it's some really great stuff. The next band is probably, to me, you must induct them because there's a band in there named Queen and this really infuriates me that Uriah Heep is not in there because Uriah Heep was the first Queen and to me this is my opinion and uh, it's just my opinion is Queen made an entire career off of ripping off Uriah Heep I know some people will flat out hate that statement and just try and comment as you like on it or what you think of that comment but it is what it is and they pretty much did now Uriah Heep pretty much was not a very consistent band like band members but there was three main constants in the beginning and it was Ken Hensley Mick Vox and quite possibly to me the greatest vocalist of all time David Byer this guy was amazing and 
Now what else can I say about your eye heap? Uh, Salisbury, look at yourself. Demons and wizards, magician's birthday, sweet freedom, high and mighty, return to fantasy, I think. All those albums were just above what every other band it seemed was doing. They were one of the best hard rock bands. And yes, they did probably have some of the had some of the highest selling albums in the 70s. Like they were one of those bands that once the 70s ended, it seemed it's the band time for God in North America. In Europe, a lot of these bands are still gods over there because they're still good and they're still touring over there. Yeah, that's your right. The next band is another band people have wanted in for years, and I really think they deserve it. Is Rush? Formed in 1968 in Toronto, Canada. Really, really great band. They've pretty much flown under the radar their entire career, but a lot of the stuff they've done has had substance to it, which is really rare to actually find in a band that their entire career has had substance. Next band is maybe not just a band, but maybe a person. Is Motorhead, and more importantly, Lemmy just for the fact he was actually in a band called Sam Go Paul, which he actually, I believe, played guitar in, which is how far back it goes. But no, Motorhead is the first speed metal band, really, if you think about it. And there's another band I'm going to talk about that really, really laid groundwork for metal as well, which I, I don't think just because you play a certain style you're excluded just because of that. Uh, next band, Yes. Now when I looked at it and I seen that Yes was not in there and it started got me thinking like there's an occurring theme in some of these bands you could call early progressive rock bands and it really is weird that a band is technically gifted and has written as many amazing songs as Yes is not in the Rock and Roll Hall thing. Next band I'm going to talk about is Probably since Metallica is in the Hall of Fame, and the fact Megadeth did not get inducted their first year like Metallica did, which I'm not going to really hate on too much, but if you're going to put Metallica in their first year, which Megadeth has been eligible since 19 or 2010, and that's how big but like. Megadeth is probably the one band that really brought metal to the masses more than Metallica. Like, music video wise, like, every one of their songs, like, people can remember Megadeth videos just because they were so good. Uh, next is an artist, but I'll also mention his first band Peter Frampton in Humble Pie with Steve Marriott was to me one of the best blues rock bands of the late 60s, early 70s. And even Frampton can have the distinction of having one of the best live albums ever made, Frampton Comes Alive. It is remembered in the songs, Baby I Love Your Way, Do You Feel Like I Do, and stuff like that, uh, Do Be Wah, and stuff like that. It's just a great record. And Peter Frampton has pretty much been one of those guys that could play guitar. He's like the Alvin Lee ten years after. I'm not sure if they're in the Hall of Fame yet. I, I don't know, but if ten years after is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they deserve to be in there. Just because Alvin Lee was known as, before well, it became a lot of skill in guitar, he was known as the fastest guitar player a lot. Uh, next band... This is the next one. This one floored me when I read this and found out he was not in because to me, he's the Eric Clapton of his generation. Stevie Ray Vaughan. How the hell can you not put Stevie Ray Vaughan in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? This just floors me when I read this. You put bands like Guns N' Roses in and you can't put Stevie Ray Vaughan in. You put the Chili Peppers in over Stevie Ray Vaughan. That, that just floors me out. He's a guitar god. Like, this guy 
was the Eric Clapton of his generation, or the Jimi Hendrix. Pretty much in the 80s, Stevie Ray Vaughan resurrected the blues. Without Stevie Ray Vaughan, the blues would not have had the resurgence of guys like B.B. King and Buddy Guy a lot. He was really responsible for it. Next band I'm going to talk about is the first North American thrash metal band that was named Anvil. And they were formed in 1978, which people talk about old Van Halen being... I, I don't think you'd really call Van Halen metal at all. You'd call them hard rock, but they were never really metal. Uh, Steel on Steel, Forged in the Fire, like these albums were amazing, amazing just to listen to from early, early metal. They also influenced Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, countless other metal bands of the time were all influenced by Anvil. And they're still touring today which is an amazing testament to how good they were. Uh, MC5. A lot of people have not heard of this band. They were sort of early punk, I guess you could say, like proto-punk, like... This mid-60s, they were formed, and they were very, very hard for their time. It was... Yeah, the next band I'm going to talk about is probably one of the longest-running rock bands to still be touring today. And the name is... Golden Earrings. Now these guys were formed out of the Netherlands. They've had countless albums, countless band lineups, but they're still a great band. Like you can go back listen to the records and they stand up. And yeah, like Golden Earrings is just a great rock band. Like they've done it all, psychedelia, light rock, hard rock, whatever. Now to get into my bands who I believe do not deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that would be starting off with probably the biggest Kiss. And people have often asked me why I don't think Kiss deserves to be in there, and I usually respond with, uh, what the hell has Kiss ever done in their career to deserve to be in there? And people usually bring up their stage show, but it's like, musically, what have they ever done? Their albums are mediocre at best. Their career, they're still living off crap they did 30 years ago, which for some of these bands you can make the same argument, but... Let's put it this way. Kiss is more known for Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley than they were anything else, and...